Are we having a good time today? How many of you have heard of the term blockchain? That's what I'm talking about. Okay. How many of you have heard of cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin? Oh, okay. How many of you are terrified of this technology? Okay. I look to change that as I'm going to infect the passion of this technology in about 12 minutes. Although many associate blockchain with Bitcoin, blockchain is the underlying technology in which the Bitcoin cryptocurrency is built upon. It's also important to note that blockchain is a part of Web 3.0. To discuss how we got there, let's begin with Web 1.0. With Web 1.0, we had static websites with little peer-to-peer -peer interaction. The data within those websites were stored in files. And we had our first technological disruption, email. With Web 2.0, we had more of a collaborative environment with the emergence of MySpace, YouTube, and Facebook. And we created a more peer-to-peer -peer environment. And finally, in Web 3.0, Although there is no true definition as it's still being developed, we are seeing the early stages with artificial intelligence, Amazon Alexa, and Google Home. We are also creating a more decentralized, secure environment with the emergence of blockchain. To better understand how the blockchain works, let's frame it like a peer-to-peer -peer payment environment, similar to PayPal, but it's decentralized. Now, let's increase the number of users to 10,000, 100,000, or a million, and they're distributed around the world. This demonstrates the decentralized nature of the blockchain that grows larger and more secure with time. Now, let's say these users are auditing and coming to a consensus that these transactions are correct. This is increasing the validity and transparency of those particular transactions. Now, if someone would want to modify or hack a particular block, they would have to have the computing power of Google in order to take over a particular block. If for whatever reason there are any kind of discrepancies within the blockchain, it's easily detectable, which translates to the immutability of the blockchain and that it cannot be changed or modified. Now, once all the transactions have been audited, approved, and consensus is met, that block is created, added to the blockchain, transparent to everyone within that blockchain network. Now, although the previous example was, scenario was simply just an example, Organizations and countries are making these capabilities a reality. In one of the first cases of the blockchain within a supply chain environment, in an effort that would normally take them six and a half days, Walmart was able to recall one batch of mangoes in 2.2 seconds. I'm going to repeat that. Six and a half days to 2.2 seconds. As a supply chain guy, that's just mind-blowing to me. <laughs> Imagine if you could do your taxes in 2.2 seconds, right? If you had your personal information on the blockchain, this could indeed be a reality. In one of the first cases of our federal government using blockchain, Catherine Holmes shared in her TED Talk how she helped indict federal agents on fraud extortion, and embezzlement using the transparent, immutable nature of the blockchain. In one of the first cases of our states using blockchain, Ohio became the first state to allow organizations to pay taxes using the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. On an even larger scale, countries such as Ghana and the Republic of Georgia are embracing this technology to track and trace land ownership, which has been a big issue within those countries. And also, Slovenia and Switzerland are looking to become blockchain nations 
as they are incorporating blockchain within their future growth strategies. Now, although these organizations and countries are implementing this technology, the underlying question is, what about the people? How can this technology, referred to by Gartner and the Harvard Business Review, as an innovation that could potentially rival the internet, benefit us? Going back to the recent uh, Russian hacking allegations, imagine if we could vote for our next local or presidential election from the comfort of our homes. Yeah. Using public and private keys, we could encrypt our data, and that could be then decrypted and transparent on the blockchain and immutable on the blockchain almost as soon as you cast your vote. Keeping with public and private keys, imagine if we put the hands of the patient medical records into the hands of the patients themselves. This could reduce the risks or costs that lead to 17 to 29 billion dollars and 250,000 deaths each year. To counter the counterfeit goods that enter in our country and cost taxpayers millions of dollars, we could track and trace our pharmaceuticals from, pharma from source to pharmacy, and we could use the same tracking and tracing for the foods we consume, where we could track it from farm to grocery store. So for that organic orange that you purchase in the grocery store, how do you indeed know it's organic? If you had a blockchain application on your phone, you could scan a quick response code on that orange and see all transactions from the farm to where you picked up that orange. So through the use of smart contracts, which are electronic contracts that automatically execute based on predefined rules, what if we removed an intermediary to have our retirement accounts and our government pensions automatically deposited into our bank accounts, reducing errors that we sometimes, we sometimes see? Next, we all know about Lyft and Uber, and they sometimes command between 25 and 40 percent commission. What if we take those profits, remove the intermediary, and put that money into the hands of the people themselves? Countries such as Arcade City and Lazus are doing this, where they're creating a decentralized ride-sharing program where each peer keeps the money within the communities. Also, going back to the smart contracts, what if you went to a rental, rental unit, you typed in a secret code, the door automatically unlocks, and the financial transaction is automatically performed, again, without human interaction. This is what organizations are doing, called B Token, where they're kind of working against Airbnb to again keep the money with the people within the communities. To counter troll farms and fake news that we see in events such as our presidential election, we are creating trust, trustful content where bloggers and authors are creating content which then is confirmed through networks, consensus is met, and they're rewarded for that particular content. That is what, that is what organizations such as Sapien are creating. Along the same lines, to counter the free content we see on Facebook and YouTube, organizations such as DTube and Steemit are creating content where, again, they're rewarding the initiators and authors 
of that content. So we're creating more trustful content that we, we view and our children view on a daily basis. So we went through a number of different scenarios today, but we're just scratching the surface from this technology. When you're driving down the road and you see new construction, you wonder what's being built. You see the resources, you see the equipment, but in reality, not much is really happening. That's where we are with blockchain from a societal aspect. I ask that you review the examples that we viewed today and see how you can improve on them. See how you can take them a step further. In doing that, maybe you can infect the passion of this technology. Thank you.